Welcome back to another week of Summer 2020 Vibe tier list where I rate the most recent episode, Monday being the cutoffs, the most recent newbie Osan Adventure one doesn't count. We're not counting the Broston versus Champion fight, but if I would rate that, that's probably going to go up like top of rate or like in here, man. That episode was great, but here, let's get it going. First episode. Let's, let's do Tensura. Tensura Tournament. It's starting. It's pretty fun. Masayuki the Fraud is getting away with not fighting, but that's the whole point of his gimmick, right? To have a character that's just to be riddled with such hype, but not do anything, and that's the power of fantasy. Gopta popping off was very fun. I don't know if it's necessarily peak. The fight animation between the cow and the horse was actually really good, but I think that we should place it here for now. It was a fantastic episode. It was very entertaining. I'm just sad that a lot of people have already dropped it because they couldn't stomach the earlier episodes. It is what it is. Next up. Failure Frame. The most recent episode of Failure Frame uh, was the Ashint cult. Yapping, yapping, and us baiting them and just destroying them. Eve just popping off. We save the kid. And we're going to the dark the land of the Golden Eye Monsters, right? And then there's some goddess stuff. What are they doing? They're like trying to figure out. Uh, they're also going in for more EXP. So everything is converging into one point. Was it an amazing episode? Eh. I mean, here's the thing with this guy's power, right? It's a bit too powerful to the point where it just gets kind of boring in terms of like a hype moment because he just shows up and just paralyzed poison. Maybe it's here, but I'm going to put this here for now. It was overall fun episode, though. Next up. We have... Oshinoko. <clears throat> Oshinoko didn't air. It was on hiatus, so we'll put it back down here. Isekai Shikaku. Isekai Shikaku recently has been, quote-unquote, falling off in terms of YouTube viewership because these episodes are self-contained stories trying to tell a lesson, right? The last two weeks happened two weeks ago. The gambling story about how people are just shitty. That was a good lesson, but it obviously doesn't like delve into the main plot. Same with last episode where it was all about Mr. Wolf protecting the orphanage and it's a story about that. It was good, but it's not like reaching, uh, you know, the numbers that we want simply due to people just not giving a fuck about these individual like it's not, it, it feels a little episodic, right? It feels like villain of the week and lesson of the week rather than building up towards the overall plot. So I think I'll put it here for now. Next. Nokotan. We, we got to Bashemi's rice field and Anko Bashemi rice field stuff, it was good. It was fun. Their whole... It, it, it was a very simple episode, right? The, the That skit, but... When I watched Nogotan... Yeah, Suchi just helping out, but part of that's fun. But notice how it's only fun when this blonde haired bitch is not in the show. I actually hate Koshitan so much. The more I think about this show, the more I realize how much Koshitan being a straight man just hurts the show. The entire formula is old fucking 90s, 80s boomer jokes with modern animation and expecting the modern audience to relate to it and having this straight man formula, it just doesn't fucking work. People have dropped it in episode 2. I wanted to continue to episode 10 just to get to, you know, the rice field. And the rice field part, I was pleasantly happy with that. But I think it's time to drop it, man. Honestly, this should have been dropped like <laughs> two months ago. But I still wanted to see the rice field. We saw the rice field. We move on. Next up, Perry. Dude. Perry is actually getting so good. I am actually getting pretty hyped over Perry recently. Ever since, like, everything until, like, the the poison frog shit made no sense. But ever since we parried the dragon, every week just has been so good. The pacing is on another level in terms of just hype, hype, hype. We might literally parry an empire next week, man. Or this coming week. Last episode also highlighted other people's... Let's see. Other people's, like, awareness and how they respect Noor. Because they thought he's useless. But now he's a local fucking legend. And every sovereign is also, like, hyping him up. I can feel 
some sort of like world building there, you know? I feel like, oh, these other important people in the show are finally giving Nordis recognition. It's pretty amazing. And we're going off to the Empire to fuck them up. It's actually getting so fun. So Perry has been rising up in my personal, like, uh, I don't know, enjoyments, my overall perception of the show. It's been pretty good. Tower of God. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. I thought that the Tower of God episode was... It was good. I don't think it's mid. Because if we're going to call this shit mid, then I think this is also mid. Maybe they should both go down here. <laughs> I don't know. Because, like, here's the interesting thing with Tower of God. When, like, each frame looks good, right? The Tower of God art, it's pretty good. But the problem is when the art starts moving, as like an anime should. And this animation studio has no clue how to do actual fight animation. And it really hurts the show in terms of the hype they're trying to bring up, right? Apparently, there's supposed to be a big fight with Ran and whoever it was. But it, would, it got reduced to him just throwing a lightning spear. And that shit happened in such a quick... It feels like they're just... It's a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> it is straight up a PowerPoint presentation where they show key frames with good quote-unquote art. But it doesn't move. It doesn't feel alive. The Blue Turtle ASMR torture scene was pretty fun, right? It, it was pretty decent, but it's just eh. Just eh. I think I'll put it down here for now. Just, just eh. And the worst part is I can't even appreciate the actual story now because of how mid the animation is. It's, it's hard for me to like give a fuck about all these different lore and stuff when they just simply graze by it. So it's, it's just, oh man. Oh man, it's just a disappointment. Next one. Osan Newbie Adventure. Great episode. Yep, this is the episode with Angie. This show is so good at delivering hype, delivering amazing fights. The animation is on another level. The fight scenes are so fucking fluid. It's not the best, it's not ufotable, but it's also amazing. I love how they tackle the power fantasy by focusing on side characters and their stories and hyping them up, and us just kind of being there as a side, right? Rick could have just ended Geese immediately. He could have. And Mr. Broston could have ended Champion immediately in the most recent episode. He could have. But the point of the story is to have actual good storytelling through these side characters and for us to care about them, and then for us, the main characters, the Oriol and Fist, to kind of assist and show the hype, right? So I love how they're handling the power fantasy so that it doesn't become boring. It's not just us just one-shotting, but the storytelling, again, the storytelling of the side characters is what's really making this shit shine. Kind of like Windbreaker, huh? Remember last season, Windbreaker? I thought it was just going to be a random ass, just delinquent fight anime. But the stories that was being told, the backstories of Togashi, right? Not Togashi, Togame, I think. That's what made it hype, right? For us to actually care about the characters. And then the beautiful animation is just cherry on top to solidify our experience with it. So... Fantastic show. If you haven't been watching this, man, you're missing out. You are missing out. In fact, I probably should put this shit like... I don't know. Not really ordered, but it's pretty fun. It's very fun. Now, we got the three heavenly kings of this season, man. Wistoria. Let's talk about it. I don't know if there has... I will try to figure out if there's anything peak, but Wistoria is getting so good. It's always been good. And now, like, the pacing is insane. Like, it feels like if you've seen Damachi Season 4, you know what I'm talking about. Where we think that we're going to lower levels, and we are. But some bad shit happens, and we go lower than expected. And it's just like, oh, oh what the hell is happening, man? The dire situation is actually getting the stakes high. Everyone is separated, and we're beneath the 11th floor now. Supposedly from 11 to 15, it's on another level, right? Be uh, even 7 to 10 was locked until this Praxis. It got unlocked just for this, but we fell even below that. Why? There's some new monster that showed up, which I think is a monster from the lower floors brought up by that guy who is also with Headless, right? There's two new antagonists. There's like a blonde guy that has a hood on, and then there's Headless. 
and Headless is going around like crucifying people. I, I'm assuming they brought the monster up or maybe by coming up they uh, in, unintentionally had the, had the guy come up with us. But regardless, due to him, we're all down here and we're trying to survive. Wignall and Will. It's the I'm it, it's kind of weird on in how fast these characters correct themselves. Julius was kind of the same too. Well, it, Julius took a while, but and he's still cocky, but he did get corrected. But Wignall in the span of one episode went from "Don't touch me, you disgusting human" to "Oh my god, I'm a nobody." <laughs> like the whole backstory of him getting like um, thrown away by his childhood friend, who is now the queen of the elves. Somehow he's a defect. His arm got cut off. Right? He's a laggard. Same with Will. So it feels like we're and, and both of us are chasing after our childhood friends, right? So Will and Wignall, they're very similar. It just seems like Wignall went down, went down the bad route, while Elfie would never do that shit to us. It's getting pretty hype. I, I can confidently put this shit here. All right. Roshtere. Most recent episode of Roshtere. What happened? Yuki happened. <laughs> yeah, y Yuki happened again. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What happened before that? The actual plot, right? It was like a student-parent meeting. That shit happened. Alia's affection. That was pretty good. For the first time, Alia is being <laughs> not a bitch and is even being affectionate towards the Japanese, which made me think that she's going to end up like leaking her affection to us in Japanese. And I hope that Kuze will then respond in, in Russian and then... The whole secret will be out, and it'll be the perfect way to just wrap up the uh, the secret. I think that'll be a really cool way to do it, but I wonder if that's a bit too cliche. It's kind of obvious, right? It's, it's kind of cheesy, but it just feels like it's going to go that way. The grandpa was a delight. We got to see a little bit more about the sad past, what's going on with the mom and Yuki, and how she can't even make contact eye contact with Masachika. It's pretty sad there. I want to know more, man. I want to know more, but I think it can, it can be put there, yeah. Grandpa is a fucking Rushibu entirely i want both grandpas to duel it out <laughs> it'd be fun to have a man on man grandpa versus grandpa but i don't know man like um it was a pretty good episode i think i'll put it here i i think we need to start recalibrating there's too many in all these different tiers like but every episode was indeed great it really was and finally mocking heroin and i'm gonna put this up here for now mocking was a bit of setup right Komari fell sick because she's trying too hard. We helped her. Everyone bonded together. The festival has been set up. Happy, happy. There's a lot of um, booba scenes with... What was her name? Karen, I think, right? Which is the girl that cucked uh, Anna. But other than that, there wasn't anything crazy happening. It was just like, you know, just setting up the festival, helping a Komari. Komari, we visit her household. Komari's siblings is very cute. The chibi skates, right? The little sister showing up saying, look at this hair. Look at this shit. It looks like my sister, doesn't it? Tell me I'm cute. It was pretty fun. Also the nurse, yes. The nurse with the recording camera was like, what the fuck are you doing? I think that they were all great episodes. Now, let's try to figure out if there was anything peak in this, right? At the end of the day, does it need to be relative? I don't think a peak episode, like I don't think there truly was like a peak episode. Everything kind of felt kind of set up or just about to pop off but if i were to say of all these episodes i don't know and i don't think these are really mid either right it was a good episode it was a decent episode it was a good episode i don't think there was anything really mid or anything really peak it was just kind of in the middle of the pack and these were kind of just in the front of the pack and these are kind of in the bottom of the pack i i think this is a decent assessment Nothing has to be peaked just because we need to put something relative. But I think this is my tier list for the most recent week of anime. And salute, Nokotan. And there's a lot of animes that we dropped, huh? <laughs> Nobody remembers this. This is just show debate. Not, I'm just not the target audience. People only care for the incest jokes and didn't watch for anything else. I don't know what the fuck was happening here. Same with this thing. Uh, intentionally dropped due to too much fan service and me just trying to be careful during this time when YouTube growth is significant right now. Mid. Kind of mid. And baited through marketing. But that's pretty much it. And I'll see you next week on the tier list.